Hello guys, this is The Gaming Revolution here and welcome back to an all new Call of Duty Vanguard video and Zombies was finally revealed after we've been getting rumours about it for the past few months. So, the rumours are indeed correct and Treyarch are going to be developing the Zombies mode in this game despite Sledgehammer Games being the main developer. So I guess you can think of this as Black Ops Cold War Zombies Year 2 and considering the fact that they are releasing new Zombies maps to Call of Duty Vanguard Vanguard, I think that probably puts the nail in the coffin for us seeing new Cold War Zombies maps in 2022 and a potential of seeing Zombies Chronicles 2 in that game as well. Anyways, let's go over the official statement. So, Treg said Zombies, a brutal, enthralling experience. We're excited to announce a franchise first crossover as Call of Duty Vanguard features an all new Zombies game mode with development led by Treyarch Studios. This cooperative experience continues and intertwines with the Dark Aether story to create deeply engaging lore all while innovating on the core gameplay that the mode is famous for. Discover the unspeakable horrors of the precursor to Black Ops Cold War Zombies while holding off the relentless onslaught of the undead when Vanguard launches on November the 5th. And they've actually let us know when we're going to be seeing the reveal trailer for Vanguard Zombies. So they said, expect a detailed preview of Vanguard Zombies as all have Hallow's Eve approaches. So it seems like the Vanguard Zombies reveal is going to be either directly on Halloween of the 30th of October or sometime slightly before Halloween, but it's going to be happening close to Halloween. So obviously that is quite a while away now and hopefully we do get more Zombies teasers and stuff like that in the meantime. But yeah, the Vanguard Zombies trailer is going to be very close to launch, literally right before launch. And I'm wondering if the reason for this is because of the fact that that we still have DLC 4 left to release in Season 6 for Black Ops Cold War Zombies on October the 7th. And I'm wondering if Treyarch wants DLC 4 to release first before the Vanguard Zombies reveal because the Vanguard Zombies reveal might spoil information about DLC 4 or maybe DLC 4 might spoil information about Vanguard and vice versa considering the fact that Vanguard Zombies is going to be a prequel, a prologue to Black Ops Cold War Zombies. But with the Vanguard Zombies Zombies reveal being by Halloween, I do wonder whether there might be some sort of easter egg or event inside of Warzone to reveal Vanguard Zombies. Because there is rumour to be another Haunting of Verdansk event this Halloween, but it's going to be more themed around Scream as opposed to the last one being themed around Saw. And if you guys are unaware, within the last Haunting of Verdansk event, there was actually supposed to be a Zombies easter egg. Audio lines actually got data mined from the files, and for some weird reason, and that easter egg got cut from the game. So I am wondering whether in the Haunting of a Dance Part 2 we might see a Zombies easter egg or event that is going to tie in to do with Vanguard Zombies' reveal, considering the fact that the last one was cut. And speaking of Warzone potentially getting zombies again, considering the fact that Treyarch are developing zombies for Call of Duty Vanguard, are they also going to be developing zombies in Infinity Ward's next title, Modern Warfare 2, in 2022? I would think that they probably are. Maybe the storyline is going to be to do with the aftermath of the zombies being at Verdansk and getting nuked, and we could see some sort of follow-up to that. We have gotten another statement regarding Vanguard Zombies saying, Prove your mettle as you try to survive the relentless onslaught of the undead in this chilling new zombies experience. They also told various influencers, whilst our historians were less helpful with this part of the project, Trek has them covered providing continuity with zombies lore while innovating on core gameplay. So I'm actually going to talk more about the storyline and also the gameplay of Vanguard Zombies in a little second. But before we get into all of that, this video has been kindly sponsored by Game Round that you can check out via the link in this video's description. Game Round is an exclusive free community-driven platform where games are picked every week to be supported by you. They are dedicated to helping game developers gather feedback, improve and polish their games to provide the ultimate gaming experience. You can check them out using the link in this video's description. Once there, create an account and head to the testing tab. There is a diverse plethora of games to choose from. When you see one you like, click play and you will be prompted to install the Game Round Launcher. Download it and extract the file with WinRAR to begin the install. Some games won't 
launch via the Game Rounds launcher, and they will simply give you a Steam key to input. From the launcher, you'll be able to download and install the game. After you've played it for a decent amount of time, you are then able to review it by filling out a quick survey about your experience. Reviews can be made in any language you desire, because you are helping out the developers in playtesting and improving their games, they want to reward you via the G-Points currency. As you playtest, survey and participate in events, you'll be able to accumulate more points. You can then use these points to purchase gaming gear and other items such as headphones, controllers and more. It's the perfect system, play brand new games, help them out and in return you will be rewarded. What's more is that you can record and share gameplay clips on the platform to highlight your best moments. So like I said earlier, you can check out Game Rounds for free using the link in this video's description to go ahead and earn some rewards and play some free games today. So bringing it back to the topic of Vanguard Zombies, I did post a whole video the other day talking about our first Vanguard Zombies teaser, but a brand new piece of intel was added to Cold War Zombies in Season 5, and this is coming from a demonologist known as Kraft, and it's a page from his journal that says this rune keeps appearing from our digs, it must have a meaning. And it is dated 1944, so this is a teaser for Vanguard, and it fits in perfectly with the time setting of World War II. And as you can see, we've got this rune here on the right, and we have gotten the Vanguard Zombies logo revealed, and as you can see, there are more different symbols and runes on the logo, and it's hard to make out exactly what they are, but we can see a trident, an eagle claw, a lightning bolt, and more, as pointed out by Phantom Ice, and if you've got any suggestions on what these symbols mean, let me know in the comment section down below. In fact, you can actually see this exact same rune from this piece of intel within the Vanguard Zombies logo. So it seems like we're going to be introduced to a new demonic language in Vanguard Zombies, similar to the Apothecan and the Keeper languages. Now, the Apothecans and the Keepers merged and were sent into the Dark Aether when the universe was rebooted on Tagda Totem. So the remnants of the Apothecans and Keepers will have mutated and corrupted over time, so it is possible that maybe that language has evolved or devolved over time into whatever language this is. But yes, the Vanguard Zombie storyline is going to be exploring what happens with Project End Station and all of the stuff that we saw unfold at D Machina. Because Nazis were experimenting with the Dark Aether in World War II, it was originally a nuclear program, but it ended up turning into research on the Dark Aether. And in a last ditch effort, when the Nazis thought they were losing the war, they actually sent Nazis into the Dark Aether because time works differently in there as a way for them to return at a later date, giving them eons in the Dark Aether to prepare for their return. And that's what we saw unfold on Mawada Toten because Valentina was tricked by the Forsaken One into thinking that Dr. Vogel, one of the Project End Station scientists, was in fact her father, and she was tricked into unleashing the Nazi zombies from the Dark Aether. That plan failed though, we ended up defeating Valentina and stopping the Nazi zombies, and the Forsaken was momentarily stopped, but I'm guessing the Forsaken is probably going to be the final boss in DLC 4. Well, the thing is, in my prior video, I talked about how there are actually quotes from Jaeger within the game that seem to infer that there is a multiverse or multiple different dimensions in the Dark Aether, and it's a lot more complicated and convoluted than we can wrap our heads around. And this makes complete sense, because before, in the old Aether storyline, we had a very convoluted multiverse, and this made the storyline really confusing. But we send that multiverse into the Dark Aether, so now we just have this new rebooted universe and the Dark Aether. Before, we had a multiverse, we had the Dark Aether, and also Agatha, so now it's a lot easier to follow. But it would make sense for Treyarch to introduce a multiverse for the Dark Aether, because then the storyline is not going to be convoluted, because we don't have a multiverse in the regular world, but if there are multiple dimensions in the Dark Aether, what it allows Treyarch to do is, considering the fact that they are going to be having different zombie storylines in each of these different games, now that all of the Call of Duties are connected with the Modern Warfare and Black Ops universe, it means that any time a big event happens in the zombie storyline, it has to not drastically affect the other games, otherwise it'll just prevent the other campaigns from happening. But if they have multiple different realms in the Dark Aether, it can allow for them to explore different, unique storylines in each of the different games, exploring different versions of the Dark Aether without it impeding on the overarching storyline of the campaigns for the other Call of Duties and stuff like that. And considering the fact that this craft guy is a demonologist, I think we are going to be exploring a different version of the Dark Aether prior to Eddie and Samantha entering this new rebooted universe 
universe later around 1965. And judging from this intel, these demonologists were researching stuff and they accidentally probably stumbled along a Dark Aether breach or something like that and they found these Dark Aether runes. And this new language that we're going to learn are probably from these demonic-like people or a cult within the Dark Aether. So I'm sure that the Vanguard Zombie storyline might start off with this group of demonologists digging through old runes and catacombs in a similar way to the Origins intro cutscene and they might uncover this ancient Dark Aether portal and these ancient runes and they might become corrupted by the Dark Aether or something like that and that is how the storyline might start. And bear in mind the Vanguard Zombie storyline might be prior to the Forsaken One taking command because in Cold War Zombies the Forsaken One, the Accursed One, the One is the main threat. Like I said earlier we're probably going to face him in DLC 4. And during Cold War Zombies he managed to actually defeat a load of the other Elder Gods in the Dark Aether as there is a hierarchy there and he managed to reign at the top of the ranks. And maybe the Forsaken One doesn't even exist yet in the Vanguard Zombie storyline or maybe Vanguard Zombies is just going to explore how the Forsaken One came to power but I think that Vanguard Zombies is going to explore a different version of the Dark Aether because things were probably very different to in Cold War Zombies and I think that we might explore a hellish underworld version of the Dark Aether where it might be on fire and there's red flames and lava everywhere as opposed to the bluish purple Dark Aether that we see in Cold War Zombies. We could explore a completely different realm in the Dark Aether and maybe in the Dark Aether there's multiple different realms with the different Elder Gods and different Old Ones ruling each of the different realms. In fact Aether Bunny did tweet me a really interesting thread over on Twitter with a bunch of research that I'll just go through right now. But they said that maybe demons are actually running the zombies and they agree that there might be some sort of Dark Aether multiverse and bear in mind it makes sense because the old Aether storyline was literally sent into the Dark Aether so if that multiverse was sent into the Dark Aether would it not create a multiverse in the Dark Aether itself? Anyways they say except it's like a Dante's Inferno 9 levels of hell thing and each layer of hell is ruled by a different prince slash demon or elder god. The servants of each layer fight each other for total control of the Dark Aether and then fight us for our world too just like the Forsaken One is trying to do and maybe the Forsaken managed to defeat all of those layers of the Dark Aether and that's what we see in Cold War Zombies but maybe prior to that in Vanguard that wasn't always the case and we do actually see these devil-like beings, these demonic-like creatures on the graffiti on D Machina so this is just even more hint us that we're going to be seeing some sort of more hellish version of the Dark Aether and even the people that were sent into the Dark Aether from the Lost Souls intel in Cold War Zombies do describe it as hell or a hellish-like place and they actually say that maybe the Dark Aether isn't actually hell but it gave humans the idea of hell. <laughs> what if people came here before and got out and, and that's how we got the whole idea of hell in the first place. It gave them the concept to begin with and I'll touch upon this in a little second so maybe the Dark Aether is less like a traditional multiverse but it might symbolically represent the staircase of hell where each of the different steps is a different dimension and goes further up the hierarchy of all of the different beings in the Dark Aether and maybe there's different Elder God rulers in each of them with the Forsaken One being right at the top in a black Ops Cold War zombies. They say I think Vogel actually knew this all along. I think he made a deal with the One and used his firstborn Valentina as a trade to gain ultimate power slash wisdom slash wealth etc. There's actually some weird support for this. Valentina's birth name given to her solely by her father because her mother died while giving birth is Angelica Hannibal. If you break that down you see some weird stuff. Starting with the first name Angelica in German means messenger of God which can seem nice for a baby girl but a person God can be subjective. Let's go to a middle name. Hannibal is the first female form of Hannibal, like the cannibal guy, but that's totally unrelated. Hannibal means Baal is gracious. Baal is usually seen as a name for various ancient gods, specifically associated with storm slash lightning or tempest, wind, rain, and war, amongst other things. His Greek, like Janus equivalent, is Zeus, but the interesting part is the Christian and Hebrew people give Baal a different name someone everyone's heard of. Baal became Beelzebub. Beelzebub is a name for who we all know as the devil. He's the prince of one of the nine hells, king of the demon armies and is second in power only to Lucifer himself. Lucifer, the Leviathan and Beelzebub were the first three angels to fall. He is known to tempt men with slash by bride specifically something we know Vogel had in spades. There is a ton more on him if you read slash know demonology. What if Vogel gave her that name because he knew she was 
already going to be given to Baal slash the Forsaken, literally, and used as a tool to further his agenda slash free him, the cults of Baal were huge and widespread in early civilizations. What if Vogel was a member of a modern cult of Baal, her name literally means messenger of God slash Baal is gracious, what if the god he speaks of is the gracious Baal he secretly worships, the Prince of Hell, would be a good follow-up to a new demonic storyline. Also, what if Group 601 was never meant to be an ether involved a German group, what if they were always a supernatural slash spiritual study unit, like the place that inspired Wolfenstein, literally being an occult Nazi castle with elite forces and weird experiments, even better they had actual archaeologists, units whose whole job was to study slash dig up artifacts for occult study slash experiments, what if Kraft was one of those men? What if the special German occult unit is conducting the digs he talks about that keep finding the runes? And what if that group is 601? What if everything that they know and use of slash from the ether was all found because they were looking for demons slash supernatural spirits slash creatures and that's why we had group 935 in the past. When they saw the potential of tangible science from the ether slash artifacts they became no longer an occult unit but an unnatural science unit that we are all familiar with as group 935. So yeah I mean even in the old storyline the old ether storyline the shadow man was often referred to as the devil he did have the 666 on him and then also the shadow man did refer to Dr. Monty as the devil on Revelations. And one could maybe argue that together they both were basically God and Devil. That is literally the best way to describe Dr. Monty and the Shadow Man. Not that either one of them was God or the Devil, but that together they were basically serving both roles to the world because they both played a part in perpetuating the cycle and the eternal chaos that played when the cycle would constantly repeat. But yeah, I do think that we're probably going to see Vogel involved in Vanguard Zombies' storyline and maybe the Forsaken could quite literally be the Devil himself. After all, we did have that piece of intel that talked about maybe people got trapped in the dark ether before and managed to escape and that's what gave humans the idea of hell itself. It gave them the mere concept and the Forsaken is very manipulative just like the Shadow Man was. But yeah, I do think that the Vanguard Zombie storyline is going to explore some sort of cult of demonologists that were studying hell and demon-like practices. Maybe they were practicing voodoo craft and all sorts of weird stuff because after all, we know that a mega group way back in the day, their original purpose was actually stuff to do with psychodronics and people that had psychic and telekinetic and telekinesis like powers just like Samantha Maxis has after she gained these dark ether powers from the dark ether. Well what if way back in the day during World War II there was a group of people that had managed to go into the dark ether and escape and harness these dark ether powers and maybe they've formed some sort of cult and I do wonder if maybe they have prophecies and can foreshadow Eddie and Samantha entering this universe sometime in the future and maybe they're going to try and enlist Samantha Maxis to join this group. This is wild speculation here but I just think that this would be a good storyline device. After all we do know that Eddie, the director, is involved with Project Janus which is the opening of Gateways and we don't know exactly what this is but we can infer that it's got something to do with Samantha Maxis's Dark Ether powers as he has been trying to experiment on them so he's probably going to be trying to open up some sort of Dark Ether breach for some sort of unknown purpose whether that is harnessing the Dark Ether's powers for himself or trying to defeat the Forsaken One or maybe trying to capture the Forsaken One or experiment on it or try and get powers from it. I'm not exactly sure but we do know that the director has been experimenting on other people like Samantha with Dark Ether powers so we know that there's multiple of them and it is inferred on Firebase C that Peck's ex-wife might be one of them. You wore the necklace from your 40th, bought it at Dahlia's, your favourite. Lovely night, isn't it? Nothing like the Big Apple in wintertime. Fresh, crisp snow on the ground. Your eyes, my dear. They look almost violet in the moonlight. And yeah, I think that that would be a really interesting storyline thread to go on in this game, exploring some sort of more demonic version of the Dark Aether. So yeah, that's pretty much everything regarding the storyline. We don't really know much so far, just that this game is going to have a demonic theme. Interestingly enough, Craft is actually the name of a crater on the moon. I don't know if this is pure coincidence, but I do wonder whether we could see some sort of Dark Aether moon zombies map sometime in the future because of the fact that we know that within the Dark Aether, you do not 
need to breathe oxygen, you just breathe in Ethereum. So technically speaking, if we went into the dark ether on the moon, we might actually be able to breathe and maybe the moon is the location of a large dark ether breach. Maybe that is the purpose of Project Janus. But yeah, that's just speculation there. Now let's talk about Vanguard Zombies' gameplay. The first thing I want to say is that this is in the dark ether storyline, so it's probably not going to have anything related to Call of Duty World War II zombies, but even though that Treyarch are leading zombies development, Sledgehammer Games are still going to be helping out and they're probably going to be doing the zombie models and stuff like that. And the zombie models look so creepy in Call of Duty World War II, so I hope we see the return of that in this game. In terms of the maps in Vanguard Zombies, we know that Project End Station does have multiple secret bunkers around the globe, so I wonder if those could be the locations of the zombies maps, but that seems a little bit boring. I would much rather like to see some more unique zombies maps, to be honest, or maybe some dark ether maps. We do know that the perks are going to be similar to Cold War Zombies, so there's probably going to be a similar skill tier system as well. We do see that there is an Anan Eber logo on the Vanguard Zombies logo. And like I said, this game has no relation to Call of Duty World War II Zombies, and I know that the Anan Eber did play a big part in that. But yeah, I highly doubt this is going to tie into World War II Zombies unless they somehow maybe retcon Call of Duty World War II to somehow tie in. I don't think they're going to go down that route though. Something else that I want to point out is we did get this piece of intel a while ago, and I think this may tie into the Vanguard Zombie storyline, and it talks about how the Anan Eber scoured the globes for the likes of Thor's Hammer, the Holy Grail, and even Atlantis itself. This piece of intel seems to infer that Atlantis is actually a real thing, and I'm going to make a whole separate video talking about this piece of intel, because I think it's worth its own discussion. In multiplayer, we do know that there is going to be dynamic and destructible environments, there's going to be dynamic weather as well, where rain comes in and stuff like that. I wonder if we could see dynamic environments in the zombies as well, that would completely change up the gameplay. There is also going to be a blind fire feature, so you'll be able to shoot from behind cover without revealing yourself. I wonder if that's going to be in zombies as well, although that wouldn't be that useful. I do really hope that we will see the return of Outbreak in Vanguard Zombies, because we are going to be seeing a new Pacific Theater World War II Warzone map, and they could totally just use this new Warzone map for Outbreak. If they do have Outbreak in this game, I feel like it'll probably come post-launch, even though I want it to come at launch, just so that it doesn't take up one of the normal survival maps DLC slots. But I would love to see Outbreak in this game. In a World War II setting, it would be so cool. I mean, just look at the Vanguard reveal event in Warzone, and how cool that was with all of the planes in the sky. Imagine that in Outbreak with that gloomy World War II depressing atmosphere. I think Outbreak in Vanguard would be insane. Now, this game is running on the Modern Warfare engine, but it's been slightly updated, so I don't really know how that's going to affect the zombies gameplay because I think the zombies gameplay is going to be really similar to Cold War. It's probably going to have a similar flow of easter eggs and progression where everything just flows really nicely with salvage. But probably zombies in Warzone is the best idea of how zombies is going to feel in this game. Now the zombie models look so creepy in Warzone, they looked awesome, but the gameplay is a bit clunky with the super sprint and stuff like that and I would just rather not see the super sprint in zombies and I hope that they do give us unlimited sprint in zombies as well, like Cold War Zombies. I think they will since Trek are developing it. I honestly don't really mind that it is on the Modern Warfare engine because it's going to mean that graphically zombies is going to look amazing in this game, which I'm so hyped about, especially in a World War II setting. I do worry a little bit about the movement, but I'm sure Trek will have it covered. In terms of the characters that we're going to see in Vanguard Zombies, Steiner was featured in the Vanguard reveal trailer. And I posted a video about this earlier, but I'm sure that Steiner's probably going to be involved in Zombies as well. Back in the old Ether storyline, he was involved with the Ascension group, so he tied into Zombies back in the day. And Steiner was shown within the D-Machina teaser, and it is rumoured that he was going to be a boss zombie on the map, but was replaced by Olov. And maybe the reason why they cut Steiner from the game, because they saved him for Vanguard Zombies, and we're going to see a younger version of him. Especially because we have this quote in the Mount Yamantau mission in Black Ops Cold War's campaign. You ask me, they're here for more than just the mainframe. Steiner was working on all sorts of crazy shit. That Nova 6 business was just the tip of the iceberg. 
and that seems to hint that he was involved with probably zombie stuff in this Dark Ether timeline. I do think that we're probably going to see operators as our characters instead of a main crew in zombies this year, so I'm sure we're going to see a lot of familiar campaign characters. Hopefully we see maybe even a potential younger version of Mason and potentially Woods. We could also see Captain Price's grandfather. We could even see a younger version of Krevchenko and also Reznov. All of those characters would be so awesome to see in Zombies. And I am looking forward to seeing where this storyline heads. It is going to be a little while until the reveal now, but I think we're going to be seeing a bunch of intel added into Cold War Zombies that are going to tease Vanguard Zombies. More stuff to do with this demonic cult. And for sure, we're probably going to see Vogel and some of the other Project End Station scientists. But I really do think that this game is going to revolve around some sort of alternate version of the Dark Ether, where it looks quite different to Cold War Zombies and is a a lot more hell-like. And just a quick reminder that this video has been kindly sponsored by Game Round. If you want to check them out, check out the link in this video's description to go ahead and get yourself some free games and exclusive gaming gear, 100% free. Anyways, thank you for watching the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're around here for the latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information. So anyways, thank you for watching and uh, bye.